reading to the Bible in a year. November 5th, 2 Kings chapter 18, the entire book of Philemon, Hosea 11, and Psalms 132 through 134. Now it happened in the third year of Hosea, the son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, became king of Judah. Rather, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, became king. There we go. He was 25 years old and he became king, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did what was right in the sight of Yahweh, according to all that his father David had done. He took away the high places and and shattered the sacred pillars and cut down the Asherah. And he broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made, if you remember that story. For until those days, the sons of Israel were burning incense to it. And it was called uh, Nehushtan. Nehushtan. I always get that one wrong. I think it's like Neshuthan, but yeah, it's Nehushtan. Let's move on. And he trusted in Yahweh, this Hezekiah, the God of Israel, so that after him there was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor among those who were before him. So he clung to Yahweh, and he did not turn away from following him, but kept his commandments, which Yahweh had commanded Moses. And Yahweh was with him. Wherever he went, he prospered, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. He struck the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory, from watchtower to fortified city. Now, in the fourth year of, rather, the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. At the end of three years, they captured it. And in the sixth year of Hezekiah, which was the ninth year of Hosea, king of Israel, Samaria was captured. Then the king of Assyria took away Israel into exile to Assyria and put them in Hala on the, and on the harp, and sorry, and on the Habor, um, the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes, because they did not listen to the voice of Yahweh their God, but trespass against his covenant. Even all that Moses, the servant of Yahweh, commanded, they would neither listen nor do it. This is important for what comes next. By way of reminder, the people of Israel um, had been, again, the two kingdoms, the people in the kingdom of Israel, um, had continually been rebelling against God from all the way back when uh, the son of um, uh, Solomon, Rehoboam, became king. They began rebelling at that point and, and broke themselves free creating the two kingdoms. And this this other kingdom, this northern kingdom, had uh, continually only ever done that which um, violated the law of God. And they were continually warring against God in all of their actions, uh, creating uh, idols for them to worship, and it was terrible. Um, so, that that's the, the kind of background to what's happening here. Verse 13. Now, In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and seized them. He's like, oh, well, we'll just go into the other part of Israel and take that. That's what people thought it was. Then Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria at Lachish, saying, I have done wrong. Turn away from me. Whatever penalty you give me, I will bear. So the king of Assyria set a penalty on Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. Thus Hezekiah gave him all the silver, uh, all the silver which was found in the house of Yahweh and in the treasuries of the king's house. At that time, uh, Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of Yahweh and from the doorposts, which Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid, and gave it to the king of Assyria. Then the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rab Saris and Rab Shaka. These are um, titles of basically military rulers for the Assyrians. Uh, from Lachish to uh, King Hezekiah with a heavy military force to Jerusalem. So they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they went up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool. 
but which is on the highway of the fuller's field. Then they came to, uh, rather, then they called to the king, and Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who was uh, over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah the son of uh, Asaph the recorder, came out to them. There we go. Make sure we don't lose notes for you here. Then Rabshakeh, or the Rabshakeh, said to them, Say now to Hezekiah, thus says the great king, the king of Assyria. What is this trust that you have? You say, but understand, they're only empty words. I have counsel and might for war. Now, on whom do you trust that you have rebelled against me? Now, behold, you trust in the staff of this, this crushed reed, even on Egypt, on which if a man leans, it'll go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all who trust him. But if you say to me, uh, we trust in Yahweh, our God, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has now taken away and has said to Judah and to Jerusalem, you shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Remember, we've talked about this before. Um, Yahweh only desired to be served in one place, and that was in Jerusalem. He didn't want them to build high places and altars and all of these other places. In fact, all of those were created for worship of demons. Hezekiah knew this, and when he came to power, he got rid of all of these things. He's calling the people back to the true worship of Yahweh. But this, this Rabshakeh, this leader of the army of, uh, of uh, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, is now assaulting the Jews in the hearing of all who can hear this. And he is speaking out in Hebrew. We'll get to that in a minute. But he's not only doing that, but he's assaulting God through the things that he's saying. He's saying that he's speaking for God. This is an important thing to remember. Back to verse 23. Uh, the Rabshakeh continues, So now come and make a bargain with my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you 2,000 horses. <laughs> if, if you are able on your part to give riders for them, he's saying to bring them out for war. How then can you turn away one official? of the least of my master's servants, and, and, and trust in Egypt for chariots and horsemen. So now, have I come up without the approval of Yahweh against this place to make it a ruin? Yahweh said to me, go up against this land and make it a ruin. See, he's now speaking for Yahweh. This does not go well for him. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and Shebna, and, and, and Joah, um, said to Rabshakeh, uh, Speak now to your servants in Aramaic, for we understand it, and do not speak with us in the, uh, sorry, in Judean, Hebrew, in the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But Rabshakeh said to them, Has my master sent me only to your master, and only to speak to you these words, and not to the men who sit on the wall, doomed to eat their own dung, and eat and drink their own urine with you? Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in Judean, in Hebrew, saying, Hear the words of the great king, Sennacherib, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, Do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you from his hand. And do not let Hezekiah make you trust in Yahweh, saying, Yahweh will surely deliver us, and this city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah. For thus says the king of Assyria, make your peace with me and come out to me and eat each of his own vine and each of his fig tree and drink of, or rather drink each of you of the waters of his own cistern until I come and take you away to a land very much like your own, a, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive oil and honey that you may live and not die. Do not listen to Hezekiah when he misleads you, saying, Yahweh will deliver us. Has any one of the gods of the nations delivered his, uh, his land from the hand of the king of Assyria? King of Assyria making himself to be a god here. Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad, 
Where are the gods of Seth or Vayim or, or Hena or Iva? When they have, rather, when have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who among all the gods of the lands have delivered their land from my hand that Yahweh would deliver Jerusalem from my hand? Now saying that he's even more powerful than Yahweh. But the people were silent and answered him not a word. The king's commandment was, do not answer him. Then Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, who is over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothing torn and told him the words of the Rabshakeh. Move on to Philemon. Since we're in a new book, let's go ahead and read the introduction. If I can find it. There we go. So, Philemon is about reconciliation and relationships between Christians. Onesimus, which means useful, was a slave of a believer named Philemon in Colossae. Apparently, Onesimus had stolen from Philemon and fled, and at some time, when, rather, while Paul was under arrest, Onesimus met him and became a Christian. Paul apparently wrote this letter at the same time as Colossians and gave it to Onesimus to carry back to Philemon. We see this in Colossians 4, 9, sorry, in Colossians chapter 4, verse 9. Paul appealed to Philemon to accept Onesimus back into his household, but as a brother in the Lord rather than a slave. In Paul's estimation, uh, estimation Onesimus was far more useful, again, play on words here, now that he was a Christian. Paul even promised to pay whatever debt Onesimus might owe Philemon. Let's begin. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother, <coughs> excuse me, to Philemon, our bro- uh, beloved brother and fellow worker, and to Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, always making mention of you in my prayers, because I I hear of your love and of the faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints. I pray that the fellowship of your faith might become effective through the full knowledge of every good thing which is in you for the sake of Christ. For I have come to have much joy and comfort in your love because the heart of the saints have been refreshed through you, brother. Therefore, though I have much boldness in Christ to command you to do what is proper, yet for love's sake I rather plead with you, since I am such a person as Paul, the aged, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I plead with you for for my child Onesimus, not his actual child, he's saying that he became a Christian under his tutelage, of whom I became a father in my chains, who formerly was useless to you, but now is useful both to you and to me. There's that play on words. I have sent him back to you in person, that is my very heart, whom I intended to keep with me, so that on your behalf he might minister to me in my chains for the gospel. Without your consent, I did not want to do anything, so that with your rather so that your goodness would not be in effect by compulsion, but voluntary. For perhaps he was for this reason separated from you for a while, that you would have him back forever, no more as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, and especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If then you regard me a partner, accept him as you would accept me. But if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. Not to mention that you owe, um, that you owe to me even of your own self as well. Yes, brother. Let me benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ Having confidence in your obedience, I write to you, since I know that you will do even more than what I say. And at the same time, also prepare me a lodging, for I hope that, through your prayers, I will be graciously given to you. 
Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you, as do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Now, Hosea chapter 11. When Israel was a youth, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. The more they called him, the more they went from them. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and burning incense to graven images. Yet it is I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them in my arms, but I did rather, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with co- rather I led them with cords of a man with bonds of love. And I became to them as one who lifts the yoke from their jaws. And I bent down and fed them. So showing the care of God over time. They will not return to the land of Egypt, but Assyria. He will be their king because they refuse to return to me. This we just read about. In, um, uh, is, are we in Second Kings? Yeah, we are in Second Kings. It's been a time. So, in 2 Kings, we just read about this. How it's the king of Assyria through Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, um, who sent his, um, his army. And in a course of time, they besieged and took over Samaria, taking everybody to Assyria. Back to verse 5. They will not return to the land of Egypt. That's the place they're trying to flee to. But Assyria and he, Sennacherib, will be their king because they refuse to return to me. Had they returned to Yahweh, he would have protected them. And the sword will whirl against their cities and will consume their gate bars and devour them because of their counsels. So my people are hung up on, re- uh, rather, on turning from me. So they uh, call them to the one on high. None at all exalts him. How can I give you up, O Ephraim? How can I surrender you, O Israel? How can I give you over to be like Adma? How can I make you like Zeboim? My heart is turned over within me. All my compassions are stirred. I will not execute my burning anger. I will not make Ephraim a ruin again. For I am God and not man, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not Come in wrath. They will walk after Yahweh. He will roar like a lion. Indeed, he will roar. And his sons will come trembling from the west. They will come trembling like birds from Assyria and like doves from the land of Assyria. And I will settle them in the, rather, and I will settle them in their houses, declares Yahweh. Ephraim surrounds me with lies in the house of Judah with deceit. And Judah is also unruly against God, even against the Holy One who is faithful. Now Psalms 132 through 134. Remember, O Yahweh, on David's behalf, all his affliction, how he swore to Yahweh and vowed to the Mighty One of Jacob, Surely I will not come into my house, nor lie in the comfort of my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids, till I find a place for Yahweh, a dwelling place for the Mighty One of Jacob. Behold, we have heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Jaar. Let us come into his dwelling place. Let us worship at the footstool of his feet. Arise, O Yahweh. To your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your holy ones sing for joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not turn your face, rather, do not turn away the face of your anointed. Yahweh has sworn to David a truth from which he will not turn back. Of the fruit of your body, I will set upon your throne. If your sons keep my covenant and my testimony, which I will teach them, so their sons shall sit upon your throne forever. 
for Yahweh has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. Here I will inhabit, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I I will satisfy her needy with bread. Her priests also I will clothe with salvation, and her holy ones will sing loudly for joy. There I will cause the horn of David to spring up. I have prepared a lamp for mine anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but upon him his crown shall blossom. Psalm 133 Behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like the good oil upon the head, coming down upon the beard, Aaron's beard, coming down upon the edges of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, coming down upon the mountains of Zion. For there Yahweh commanded the blessing, life forever. Now Psalm 134. Behold, bless Yahweh, all you slaves of Yahweh, who stand in the houses of Yahweh by night. Lift up your hands to the sanctuary and bless Yahweh. May Yahweh bless you from Zion, who made heaven and earth. That's it for today. That's all the reading and all of the notes. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Behold the word of the Lord.